This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for the support. Thanks for following me. Thanks for joining me. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Simone Biles withdraws from the 2021 Olympics. This has been a big topic, and I want to touch on it. Um, this has a few layers to it. And I've been hearing different stories, uh, some from the black community and some from uh, the Associated Press, and actually uh, some from, uh, I would say, underground uh, editorials or publications. So first, we'll go on what Simone Bowles said. Now for you, uh, for you guys who don't know, Simone Bowles is, a, uh, is an Olympian. Um, she first came onto my radar in the last Olympics. And um, I think it's safe to, safe to say she's probably probably the best that's ever done it. Uh, very talented, and uh, she's done something. She did something, I believe, uh, not too long ago, uh, back in March, I believe it was, the Yurchenko, uh double pike uh, with a perfect landing. So uh, no one's ever done that in competition, probably, you know, in warm-ups or practicing, uh, but not in competition. She's the first to pull that off in competition. And I think it's safe to say she's the best to ever do it. Now, she says she's pulling out in, uh, over concerns uh, with her health and physical, uh, with her mental and physical health. That's why she's pulling out. And uh, there's been people with different views on that, uh, opposing views. So some say, hey, good for her. Uh, Mental health should come first, and she shouldn't jeopardize her health, her mental or physical health, for a medal or to represent her country. Uh, kudos for her. That's the take from some. And you have another side that says she's uh, she's soft, and this is what's wrong with this generation. They're too soft. They have you know, mental prowess. Uh, you know, no, no mental fortitude, and this is what, what's wrong. She's a representation. What's wrong with this this generation? And she's 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 weak. She's punking out. That's another take. Now, of course, I have an objective take, but then I have a direct, strong perspective or opinion on it also. So first off, you know, mental health is important. It's very important. Uh, physical health, of course, is important also. Now, I have a different take of when to stop. Um, if I'm competing at the highest level, hey, I'm, I'm going to keep going probably until I break. Uh, that's just me. So my thing is, what's the point of competing if you have a stopping point? And what is that stopping point, right? And what makes a true champion? You know, I was always told uh, in regards to life uh, that the champion is not a true champion until they get knocked down or they lose and get back up and win the title again, reclaim the title. That's what a true champion is, not someone that holds the titles but never faces adversity. Uh, you know, that's why many people 
you know, don't put the boxer, the retired boxer Floyd Mayweather Jr. on uh, the, the Mount Rushmore of boxers. Uh, I believe he is. I believe Floyd is the best to ever do it because he has faced adversity. Now, has he lost in the ring? No, but I've seen Floyd get rocked a few times where he could have laid it down, where many would have laid it down. And Floyd has faced adversity outside of the ring and was able to come back in the ring on short notice and be professional and, uh, and perform at a high level. Uh, Floyd has been able to not drink, uh, not eat bad, not do drugs over the course of his life with all the money and fame and popularity he has. He's avoided those things. Uh, and he comes from a family of drug abusers and drug dealers. So that's adversity within itself. So yeah, I just want to say that. So you can have adversity and you can take some L's and get knocked down in life but be undefeated in your profession and still be considered the best. Now, uh, Simone Biles, what was she going through mentally that uh, would have made her think, if I perform, if I compete, I could be jeopardizing my health, my mental health, and my physical health. Now, there are reports that she takes ADHD uh, medication, uh, Ritalin, and she's been taking it since a young child, since she was a young child, and uh, I would say she needs it. She's dependent upon it at this point. I was told by my wife, you know, Ritalin is not something you can just stop taking because you want to stop taking it and everything's okay. They have to wean you off of it. It's a process. and. Uh, it could be a struggle coming off of that stuff. Now, I say that because although Ritalin is legal uh, and is okay with the Olympics, it is banned in Japan. Now, the, this year's Olympics is held in Japan. It's restricted, banned in Japan. But I read also in 2020, Japan created, you know, a loophole and... Um, to where you know certain people could athletes could use Ritalin or uh, Adderall, and uh, so that was in 2020. I don't know if that exception applied also to 2021. Not sure, but in 2020 they did have an exception for athletes to use Ritalin and Adderall, although usually it's banned in Japan. Now, a country's rules and bylaws override the Olympics. Reason being, you have countries competing. So if the U.S. is okay with something, but China or Germany or whatever country is not okay with something, that's not fair competition, right? So everybody has to compete on an equal platform. Now, could that be re the reason she withdrew? Because she couldn't get her medication and she just wasn't there. Now, I've never had to take anything like that, but I've heard things about Ritalin and Adderall, and it it has you completely focused. So in my opinion, that is a performance-enhancing drug because within yourself, when you're competing at that level, your focus can be tampered with. The pressure can get to you, but if you're taking a drug that overrides that, that fights that anxiety, that fights that nervousness that you have no control over and you're going to be complete, completely focused, that's a performance-enhancing drug. You know, I, I know guys that have taken uh, shots of alcohol, weed, uh, you know, pop pills before games to take off the edge, to, to take off the anxiety, the nervousness, the pressure. That's enhancing their performance. Does it make them run faster, be quicker, more powerful? No. But anxiety and nervousness is real when you're competing at that high level. Trust me. Trust me. I used to get butterflies in my stomach before every game. 
But for every game, I had to take a dump. Because in coming out here, and that was at the high school level, man. But we were performing in front of big crowds. Everybody's coming out, family, friends, the neighborhood. You got drunk cats in there yelling. You got the opposing team fans uh, and, and attendees yelling, cussing. Uh, just the pressure of one, wanting to perform well, all eyes on you. You know, basketball isn't like football where you got on a helmet. They know exactly who you are. Your name's on the back of the jersey sometimes, and but your face is definitely out there. They know who you are. You can't hide. And uh, especially as a point guard, man, you, you, you're somewhat on an island having to bring the ball up. A guy's guarding you, trying to take your ball. The guy you're trying to pass it to is being guarded. You got a coach yelling plays at you. You got the opposing coach yelling stuff. You got the fans yelling. Man, that's a lot of pressure, a lot of anxiety. So imagine being in college. Imagine being in the pros. Imagine being in the Olympics. What kind of pressure that is. What kind of anxiety and nervousness can come over you. So I totally get why people need, you know, different medications. Uh, legal or illegal. I get it. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I get it. But... That's what makes you a true champion. When you can uh, override all that stuff, overcome all those things, and still perform and produce at a high level. Evidently, Simone Biles was not able to do that. Now, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. Uh, you can't berate and look down on, upon, upon someone because they struggle with mental health. Uh, we all have our breaking point. We all have a threshold uh, that prevents us sometimes from, from being perfect. So you can't look down upon her on that. Um, I'll tell you the only issue I really have that's not been spoken about really, and that's the double standard. Now, hear me out. I believe there should be a double standard. I don't believe men and women are equal. I don't. I think we both bring powerful things, important things to this world, to the universe, to a relationship, to a marriage, to a friendship, different things, but both are valuable, but we're not equal. And so I have a problem with the media, with feminists, with certain men saying women have evolved, men and women are equal, but women are not held to the same standard. A man could not get away with withdrawing from competition and state his mental health is not there. Listen, his career would be over. Sponsors would abandon him. The media would eat him up. His woman would look at him crazy. Everybody would look at this dude crazy if he said he had concerns about his mental health and his physical health and he could not perform. Now, there's one thing a man saying, hey, my knee is not up to par. My elbow is not up to par. I got issues with my neck, my spine. Oh, we're more forgiving with that. We understand that. Because that's out of our control. If you got a bad back, knee, foot, ankle, that's out of our control. There's only so much you know you can do with that, right? It's got a lot to do with medication and genetics, how fast you recover. It has nothing to do with mental, I don't believe. But when you say your mental health is compromised, people look at you differently because they believe it's a battle of will for you to overcome that, but they believe your will is weak and you can lose the respect of people. And so I got no problem her withdrawing. I have a problem with people constantly pushing this narrative that women can compete on the same level of men, but they want to change the rules and they don't want to hold women at the same equal standard. Got a problem with that. You can't have both. Either we're going to be equal and compete on equal platforms with equal standards, or we're not equal 
and we'll be okay with that. And it's okay not being equal. Women do some things better than men. Men do some things better than women, and that's okay. We don't have to be equal, all right? We both bring value to a team. Now, important word, team. A team, whether it's a marriage or corporation, and uh, I'm stating this to, to, to shut down this narrative that we're equal. So a team, whether it's a marriage or corporation or basketball team, football team, is one. A team is one. But everybody on the team is not equal. Everybody is important and brings value depending on their respective position. But everybody's not equal. So although we're one, we don't bring the same impact, we don't bring the same influence, we don't bring the same value. But we are important in regards to our respective position. And everybody has to be okay with that. Everybody has to be okay with that. Play your role, play your position, and do it well. Even in a marriage, when, you know, for my Bible thumpers, when the marriage talks about oneness, you know, that's been so uh, falsely, you know, uh, when it's saying one, the man and woman's one, it's not meaning oneness in terms of equality. It's oneness in, in terms of team, your team now. And like I just stated, everybody on the team does not have equal value, importance, and impact. Everybody has a job, everybody has gifts, and that's what you're supposed to bring to your best ability. So um, that's my only problem with this whole thing, that she's not being held to the same standard that's being pushed upon us, that women are equal to men. I think if we're just honest, we can say no, not equal, no, we're not judged equally. Like I said, a man could not overcome this withdrawing from the Olympics because of mental health concerns. He would not get a pass. You know, I was doing some research and this research had me thinking, man, should women even be competing at this high level in athletics? You know, a lot of these uh, female Olympians you know, who compete at a high level, and athletes, female athletes who compete at a high level, a very intense level, uh, have their puberty, their puberty and their menstrual cycles are stunted. So they don't experience womanhood and, and flowering <clears throat> at the age they're supposed to, what, 15, 16. Sometimes they don't have a cycle or experience puberty until their 20s. That's not natural. So something unnatural is prohibiting from the natural taking place. Something's out of order. And something has to give. Something has to give. Is it that mental health that's given? Right? Now, we just had Osaka I believe her name is Osaka, the tennis player, withdraw from competition also because she said she had mental health issues. I think she withdrew from Wimbledon, I believe. I might have the tournament wrong, but she withdrew recently uh, stating mental health issues. Now, she's competing at a high level. So what's giving? Something has to give when Mother Nature is tampered with. What's the sacrifice? It may be the mental health. So should, should women even compete at this level? Are they out of pocket, out of place, out of order? Hey, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Yeah, uh, so to end it, I'm not judging Simone. I am judging the media. I am judging feminists, the narrative that certain guys are even pushing. Can't have your cake and eat it too. We're either going to compete on an equal ground, equal standards, have accountability equally, 
or we're going to acknowledge that we're not equal and be okay with that. But you cannot have it both ways. All right, as usual, from me to you, with love, peace.